If you thought the Lightning were done making trades, well, think again. Another trade tonight. We talk about all that more, but first, let's play that music. You're Locked on Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Denker. This episode of Locked On Lightning is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Today we're talking about really news that broke about a little under a half hour to an hour ago, half hour to an hour ago. Uh, Lightning move Vladisov Nemestikov to the San Jose Sharks for Michael Essamount a young 26 year old forward and first reaction. Well, listen, um, I was shocked. I was really shocked about this trade and, and, and I'm glad it happened. I think all lightning fans, I think we could all agree that, you know, I, I'm going to call what it is. You know, I, I'll admit in the past, I've been very critical of certain players and, you know, wrongfully. So the infamous, uh, Brandon Hagel rant that resulted in me having an epiphany back in December. Go ahead and check that out. Uh, but I, I think I could speak for everyone when I say that, you know, as, as much as, you know, some people, he might have been a fan favorite to some, and that's perfectly fine. Let, let's face it, Nemestikov had to go. I'm sorry. He, he on most nights, really a majority of the season, like 90% of the season, you, you would have never thought that he was on the ice. I'm sorry. And his inability to come in and score points was really holding this team back, not only just in terms of down-the-road success, but in terms of just lineup changes and and, and line combinations. And, and we've seen it over the last month or so. Uh, John Cooper playing Nemestikov on the fourth line, which was just – one of the things that if you've been listening to the show or been following along with the show uh, over the last month or so, uh, it has really been on my nerves. It has really irked me um, beyond comprehension. But uh, Julian Brees Boss has just been cooking after making a very controversial deal a couple of days ago uh, for Tanner Janot, where really I think that that is going to be a deal that is going to be spoken about for quite some time. Um, and, and, you know, unfortunately it's going to be up to Jano to really silence a lot of people and to, to, to really show that he was worth um, what I like to call really that King's ransom that the lightning gave up to Nashville. Um, this was a deal that I'm glad got done. It was a deal that needed to get done. So just breaking it down, the lightning send a Mestikov to San Jose, Mike Essamont comes back. The Bolts retain 50% of Nemestikov salary and gain 500K in cap space. Uh, Essamont is described as a gritty puck hound that plays up and down the lineup. So that's definitely what you want to hear. Uh, he's a high shot volume player as well, about three, three shots per game. Uh, and he could fight. Um, and he's an RFA, so the Lightning will be able to bring him back. Uh, what for what I would imagine would be a considerable, uh, reasonable deal for the Tampa Bay Lightning over the summer break. But um, really, I, I think that this really is when we, it, it, and this all depends on Julian Brees' boss, if he does get a deal for a deal done for a depth defenseman from now until. Uh, the third the de deadline it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how much of an impact this deal really has i mean down the road this still will will help out the lightning um well not really so much because Nemestikov, i believe was done after this this year but i i just think in terms of the lineup i think it's really going to help out the lightning um I, 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 my, my, like I've said, I, I, I think that having Nemestikov and, and, and even thinking about it now, having Nemestikov on that fourth line, especially going into the playoffs, um, 
was really going to be a recipe for disaster. It was going to be a, a really, really a thing that I think the Maple Leafs uh, were going to exploit uh, later on in, in the in the series, and that the Lightning. You know, we all know John Cooper likes to flip around the lineup, and that's great. But at the end of the day, I mean, the mess the cough on a grind grinder line is just it, it, it's not good. It's not good. Um, you know, I was arguing for the longest time that if the Lightning were going to move pieces around, you know, instead of Maroon off the fourth line, you got to put Perry on the third line, which, you know, you would see here and there throughout the course of games, but starting off games with Perry. Uh, on the fourth line instead of, you know, I, I would have rather have Nemestikov just stayed on the third line instead of having him on that fourth and Maroon on the third line. But you know what? Julian Brees boss has solved the issue, um, has addressed the elephant in the building, which really, if I, you know, as, as much as, you know, some people are nostalgic, I guess, of Nemestikov because he got his beginnings with Tampa. It, it, it was really just, it, it was really a crutch having him on this team. I'm sorry. You know, he he had his flashes to where he looked like, you know, he was just a goal away of getting it together. And he just could never get it together. <laughs> and, uh, you know, th at the end of the day, Julian Brees Voss is trying to win championships. And um, you know what? Vlad Mestikov isn't a part of that. He isn't a part of that. Where Michael Esamot down the line, you know, God forbid, you know, barring, you know, if, if there's an injury or if, if there's some sort of matchup where uh, Cooper wants to play Asama in, you know, instead of, I don't know, maybe, in, I don't know who you sub out, but that's a whole nother conversation for another night if if it needs to be addressed. But, you know, Asama does give you as, as, even though he does have a lack of experience in the NHL, uh, only 40 games played in his career over three years, he still gives you that ability to go out, the, to throw him out there uh, on the ice and play physical because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's it's harder to find your way in the scoring department, which that was really what Nemestikov was brought in to, to do, was to score points. Now, I wasn't expecting him to score 20 goals this year. I was expecting him to to, to be somewhat of a table setter, to, to, to be that guy to – to be a stereotypical third line guy, do a little bit of everything. Obviously, you know, he, he's a little bit undersized in my opinion. So I don't think we were going to see him score that uh, fight that much or, or play that physical, but uh, you know, do something out there, you know, make an impact in some way. And he really failed to do that this year. So um, Esamont does give you a chance. And, and, and that's the good thing with his style of play that you don't need him to go out there and score points necessarily. He will go out there and and be able to play physical. And he's a center, so you could switch him into that that center spot, or if if you wish to, move him out to the wing position as well. But um, I really like this trade. I don't think Esamon's going to be that big of a of a piece to this team because at the end of the day, who do you really sub out? Or are you are are we having the conversation about Belmar not playing in certain games? I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, that'd be an interesting combo to see Bell, uh, to see Esamon on that fourth line uh, between Perry and Maroon or, or whomever you, you choose to, to sub out um, on those lines. Um, but yeah, once again, I think uh, until we see otherwise, I think Brees boss uh, hit this one out of the park. He gets rid of a, of a really a lackluster player. Uh, and, and brings in one that, you know, it's like I alluded to, it's a lot easier to get into the mode of playing physical than going out there and getting into the mode of scoring goals and scoring points. Um, and on top of that, this sets up the potential for another deal to be made by Julian Brees boss to really go out there and get that deft defenseman that the lightning do need so badly. So we will keep an eye on the coming days um, for that. Uh, I do want to talk about some of the moves that have been made over the last couple of days because really it, it, the East, not only Atlantic Division, but the East is just getting insane, insanely good. It's getting stacked. So we're going to talk about that uh, in just a little bit. But first, I'm going to talk about today's one of today's sponsors, 
And that is Indeed. Now, Indeed makes it easy to connect with your applicants. No need to install anything extra. Indeed's virtual interviews work from your browser. Uh, Indeed saves you headaches. In interview virtually with no downloads, plugins, or purchases. You could do it all in one place. I love it. If I was running my own business, I would love to have Indeed because it makes it super easy for me to find the best candidates out there. So go right now to Indeed. They're having a great, great, uh, great um, promotion right now for everybody. Start hiring right now with the $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. Once again, go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. One more time in case you didn't hear indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed so once again i i mean great trade by julian breeze boss just hits it out of the park once again freeing up cap space for the tampa bay lightning um at the same time really just bringing in the type of player that i think all lightning fans and, and i think really John Cooper loves to have, and that's the gritty guys. And, 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 you know, I said before, yeah, Esamont really, you know, he doesn't have a lot of NHL experience, which is fine. You know, that shouldn't be an issue. Um, you know, I don't expect him to play a bulk of games uh, just yet. You know, maybe, you know, barring some matchup issues, um, you know, we will see more of him. Uh, in the lineup or, or, you know, an injury should arise. Uh, we spoke about earlier when the trade buzz was going around um, that, you know, Luke Shen, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, I would have loved to have seen him come back, but, you know, now he's in Toronto, unfortunately, and the Lightning are going to have to deal with him uh, in the first round. But not only that, not only are we going to talk about uh, Toronto right now, because, I mean, the amount of trades, I mean, this has been at least since we've had this show, since February of 2020, um, off the top of my head that year when the Lightning got Coleman and Goodrow and then signed Bogo, all it within this matter of weeks, I can't imagine that there was any really big time trades at that time. I mean, if I, I'm drawing a blank, I mean, three years was forever ago. Uh, a lot has happened. We've had four NHL seasons, but... Um, if you remember a big trade from that deadline, let me know. Post it below uh, on our on our YouTube channel below this video, uh, just to jar my memory. I'm sure I'll remember it as soon as we stop recording here. But I mean, you look at the East now because you know I've been talking about the entire time these last couple of weeks. You know, I, I think at least since mid January, if not earlier, I've been talking about how. Really, at this point in time, barring some catastrophic shift in the Eastern Conference, that the Lightning, it, it's pretty, I think, pretty set in stone at that point in time. And, and we'll talk about it now. It's pretty much set in stone that the Lightning will be playing the, 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 the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round. Now, having said that, I mean, I don't think that we'll see any type of shift. I mean, Buffalo is, is, is six points behind. I mean, 12 points behind in the division. So the chances of them catching up on Tampa are pretty much slim to none now. So I think we could all agree that Tampa Bay is playing Toronto, but the thing that really makes me nervous, not only for the play, the potential playoff run that can unfold for the Tampa Bay lightning. If they do, get past Toronto because let's face it this Toronto team that we will be seeing uh in the first round is definitely different from the one that we've seen last year uh their GM Kyle Dubas has done a phenomenal job I think uh of of just adding pieces of of adding anybody that could come in and and win it contribute and help them win a playoff series and and this might be the toughest first round I think that the lightning may have had in quite some time but what I'm really interested to see I mean and not to get too much ahead of ourselves but when you really look at it let's face it the lightning are going to be in it's going to be in a very crazy predicament in the eastern conference because 
you look at the other teams that the Lightning could potentially play in the Eastern Conference that are making the playoffs. You know, Boston, who's just playing insane. I, I mean, Linus Allmark is just the greatest goaltender on earth right now. Let's face it. I mean, the guy is just went undefeated in the in the month of February, scored a goal. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the moves that Toronto made, uh, we'll get into that. But, you know, just in case you haven't uh, been following along and, and even the, the moves that we will see uh, that have been made by other teams in this division, uh, most notably today, uh, Ottawa getting Jacob Chikrin, who for some time it was talked about, you know, where is he going to go? And now we're, now we know, uh, just the other teams in the Eastern conference. I mean, it's, it's going to feel like to me, I think in every round that the lightning do play, if, you know, and I still believe regardless of these moves that other teams have made in the Eastern conference, that, that they the lightning can if everything gets going and, and and I think that they are this is even more of a reason for them to get a deaf defenseman. Um, you know, I saw someone on Twitter before uh say Eric Carlson, which <laughs> that would be pretty insane, but I think that there would have been some sort of deal done if Carlson was even in the cards for the lightning uh in this in this Vlad deal, but I don't think it's gonna happen. But so you have, like I stated already, Ottawa has Jacob Chikrin, and I'm talking about not just the playoffs, but down the line into next year. Uh, Carolina has Shane Goss to spare. The, the Rangers got Patrick Kane, which, I mean, there's no guarantee that he will stay with the Rangers, so there's that as well. Um, Capitals, well, they, they made a deal for, for sending Lars Eller. Uh, but like I said, Luke uh, Luke Shen goes up to Toronto, and 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 just, you know this is the thing that sucks is that about the NHL and, and just sports in general is when you've won championships with players that and and players that you've you've really grown fond of over time, uh, and now you got to go in there and and especially a guy like Luke Shen who we've spoken about was one of the first names when we were talking about the trade deadline. Uh, about him potentially coming back, and now we got to play him in the first round. And then the Leafs also pick up Eric Gustafsson. Uh, Carolina picks up Jesse Punjarvi. Uh, I, I mean, it keeps going on. The, the just the moves that the Leafs have made in general. Uh, Jake McCabe, Sam Lafferty, another name that the Lightning were potentially in the mix for to get. Uh, and then you look at other teams in the conference. Uh, Timo Meyer. Uh, you know, does this put, does this make the devils dangerous? My opinion, not really. Um, it makes things exciting for Rangers fans when they have to play there against the devils in the first round, but definitely doesn't make things exciting for the lightning when they potentially have to play, um, the Rangers if they do at some point, which that'd be a pretty cool, um, pretty cool matchup, kind of a rematch of the conference finals, uh, Boston, they got uh, Garnett Hathaway and Dmitry Orlov solidifying just both sides of their blue line and their forward line um, there. So, you know, everybody's stacking up. Everybody, everybody is 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 really putting a lot of, of, of bullets in, back into the gun. Uh, another trade. I'm just going through all the trades that have been made. Uh, that we have not spoken about, really. It's insane. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, Noel Achari going to the Leafs. Uh, Lightning fans should be familiar with Noel Achari, who was on the Panthers for quite some time, who was a tremendous pain in the butt uh, for the Lightning uh, during his time in South Beach, or which whatever you would like to call that part. Um, sun- I will just say Southern Florida. I, I really don't care at this point. <laughs> um I, I consider where the Florida Panthers play practically Miami, um, even though it it isn't. But really what I'm saying is that at the end of the day, these moves and whatever potential move the Lightning do make from now until the trade deadline, is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough? I mean, at the end of the day, we, we know that there's going to be certain things that the Lightning are going to be better at than other teams, you know, just because you bring in and, and hockey is not like basketball or, you know, really any other sport where you bring in all these, these guns, uh, you know, taking 
take for example the light uh the the, the rangers bringing in vladimir tarasenko and then patrick kane doesn't necessarily guarantee that they're going to win a cup you know they could very well get knocked out in the first round um whereas you know the lightning bringing in a tanner jano bringing in a mikey sma you know potentially bringing in another def- uh defenseman is that going to be enough at the end of the day if you're asking me that question my answer is look at the goaltending is Igor Shosturkin going to going to be better is 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 he going to be able to rise the occasion is Vlad uh is Vasilevsky going to be able to 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 carry this team at times when they're not really rolling in all cylinders throughout the playoffs uh, what kind of Vasilevsky are we going to get in the Stanley Cup playoffs where, you know all these questions that are going to be need to be answered in the first round against the 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 Toronto Maple Leafs so really at the end of the day you know, this is why we play the games. This is why, um, you know, we don't give out the we don't give out the the Stanley Cup to just the best regular season team. Now, really, at the end of the day, I think it'll really come down to goaltending, as it always does. You know, Ilya Samsonov, Joseph Wool, are are they going to be enough to stand up against the Tampa Bay Lightning, or are we going to see a repeat of last year's first round matchup? I would be inclined to say the latter. So I, I still think, you know, as I always say on this show, you know, the Leafs are the same old Leafs until they prove me otherwise. And, and, and so that's, the, that's how I think all Lightning fans should look at it. Um, and I'm sure the, the Lightning to a certain degree feel that way, but obviously won't take the Leafs um, lightly in that first round. But at the same time, like I've said, you know, you get by the Leafs and look what's waiting for you potentially on the other side in the second round. So, you know, Boston, um, they're still a very good team. Linus Allmark is just unreal this year. I think he's a lock for the Vezina Trophy. And then after that, I mean, look who else you got waiting for you. P- potentially the Devils who, you know, age is really against them. Experience, inexperience is really against them. And then on the other side of that, you got a Rangers team who's hungry, who's tasted a little bit of a playoff run, got knocked out by the Lightning in the Eastern Conference Finals. Are they going to take the next step? Are they going to be a team that is, you know, not going to be that same team who won the first two games and then got steamrolled by the Lightning uh, afterwards? You know, it, it, these are all questions that are going to have to be answered once the Stanley Cup playoffs start. Uh, and, and I'm all really excited about it. And that's why I love the trade deadline, because this is where really at the end of the day, championships are made. So we'll keep an eye on that. I don't think, in my opinion, Julian Brees boss is done. I think he's got a couple of more moves left under his left in his sleeve. So we'll see what he does. I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, if he gets a defenseman, um, that's great. I, I, I think that I would almost be shocked that if he did, if he didn't at this point. So we'll see. And and for all those who are still stressing about the Tanner Janot deal, listen, he's going to be fine. It takes a couple of games or so for him. A player like this, I see Yanni vibes. If you saw my tweet uh, on Twitter, uh, I think a couple of weeks, a, a week or so ago when I was talking about Tanner Janot, when I was throwing that name out there, gives me Yanni vibes. And you know what? I'll even say this about Esamont. If he plays well, he comes in and he excels at all, all the points of his game that he is good at. Not saying we're going to see a, a repeat of 2020 and, and 21, but pot- has potential not only because he's coming from San Jose, potential to be another Barkley Goodrow. So we'll keep an eye on that as well and update you on all these players' performances. Uh, so we'll we'll wrap things up in just a little bit. But first, I want to talk about our last sponsor of the day, and that is our partners and friends at FanDuel. Now, in case you haven't noticed FanDuel is America's number one sports book. We're halfway through, almost done with the NHL season. So there's all those props and odds. The Lightning now have the fifth best odds. I believe they were this morning when I was checking. It was plus 1,200, which is perfectly fine. I, I think those are good odds. Definitely good return if you throw some money on them now. Um, I don't think Esamont really moves the needle for them in terms of odds. So I think if you go into that right now, you should be able to get those odds right now. So go ahead and do that. And you should be able to do it relatively easily because they have a great app. 
It's easy, it's secure, and most importantly, it is safe. So go ahead and do that. And if you want to throw some uh, some bets in in the middle of some of these lightning games, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout while including easy to bet live in game betting. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash on slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel. So wrapping things up, I, I you know the more I think about this trade, the more I I read and I look at video of Esamot. I'm not saying he's gonna be Barkley Goodrow. I don't think he's gonna be that big of a part of the long term success for this upcoming playoffs. I think that this is Brees Boss's way of a getting rid of that Vladdy money, which is perfectly fine, getting Nemestikov out of the conference so we don't have to see him uh, for now. <laughs> um, and at the same time, you bring in a player who's multidimensional. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, just the styles of play, if you compare the two, I mean, this was too much of a good deal to pass up. So, you know, at the end of the day, those kind of players, like I stated earlier in the episode, are easier when it comes to acclimating to their environment than it is for scorers. It's a lot easier to go out there and play physical and 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 just do the dirty things out there than it is for a scorer to go out there and start scoring goals. So uh, I, I think this is a very good win-win situation for the Lightning and San Jose being a lesser team. Take on a big contract that's expiring at the end of the year, and 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 I think at the end of the day, uh, Brees Boss hit this one out of the park. So you know, hopefully, in the next couple of days, uh, if not by the eleventh hour, that we are, we we hear some sort of news about Brees Boss getting a deaf defenseman. As for who's out there, I mean, the Esamont trade in terms of getting him, and. To be fair, not really a player that's on a lot of people, unless you're a Western Conference fan or or a Sharks fan, really not a player that's on your radar. So to get a player like this, it's not only unexpected, and a, but it's a very good surprise for Lightning fans. And I think Lightning fans should be very happy about this trade um, and, and should be really excited about what potential uh, Mike Esamont could have in this system with John Cooper and company. Uh, so... We'll keep an eye on Esamont, like I said, and the best way you could hear from us as we continue our talk on the Lightning's trade deadline plans, as well as, you know, how the players that they have brought in fare in the coming games. Uh, go to our social media accounts at LO underscore Lightning on Twitter, Lock on underscore Lightning on Instagram. You could give me a follow on Twitter at Danky Dank, D-E-N-K-Y-D-8-N-K. Love hearing from all of you. Uh, and most importantly, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are, you know, we're putting out videos every single day. Uh, we're going to be following the trade deadline stuff and, and all the, the moves being made by the Lightning very closely. So go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Hit that thumbs up and most importantly, hit that notification bell. So as soon as the newest episode drops, you will you will know and you'll be able to listen and drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about this trade. And most importantly as well, we are available wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. So you know, Spotify, I, uh, Apple, uh, Google Play, wherever, Stitcher, uh, the Audible app. Go ahead. We are there. Listen to the newest episode. And, of course, hit that notification bell. So we'll be back tomorrow to talk about possibly, hopefully, another trade. Hopefully, uh, JBB doesn't keep us waiting too long. So, But in the meantime, that has been it for this episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I'll talk to you next.